Hello, my beautiful Virgo friends. How are you today? Welcome to the channel. You guys are the problem solvers of the Zodiac. Let's jump into the reading. Spirit, please give us clear and helpful messages, down-to-earth practical messages for our friends who are Virgos and seeking their highest good in seeking their happiest life and most fulfilling, destined, joyful inhabitants of Earth. Fools embrace transmuting pain. Oh my goodness, that's very scorpionic. So what we're seeing, Virgo, right now for you is that many of you have maybe physical pain a lot, but a fool's embrace is also perhaps some of the choices that you've made in life. You're really like you're embracing them and yet you're living through a lot of pain with them. Now that will be for some. For others, it will be transmuting pain, turning pain into something else, manifesting something else through the pain of the price that you've paid for something. So let's look and see what the next message is. This is the Shaman's Dream Oracle, if you're wondering. We have Fallen falling Angel, Spiritual Narcolepsy. So what I'm getting here is that Virgo, it looks like you want something so badly that you're pushing ahead. And you may not be listening to your inner voice that's trying to guide you. Because transmuting me pain means that you may be paying a price that's too high because you're not spiritually attuned. Drifter, experiencing life as it comes. So you're the, what, what we're seeing here is Spirit is saying that you're sort of letting other people take the reins. You've sort of let go of control. You're more in this energy of wandering between realms. So you feel a little bit lost. You feel a little bit like you, you're not sure what it is that's going to really help you get where you want to go. But hey, you're a Virgo, so you're a problem solver. So let's jump into the energy. And I'm going to do, at the end of the reading, we'll get some advice from your ancients and your ancestors. And also, too, I do, I'm very practical. So one of the tips I want to give you for the day is that in any relationship, to have a strong, healthy, thriving relationship, you must have five positive interactions for every single negative interaction. So on that note, let's pick up these cards and let's look. We're going to look at the shadow side. We're going to clarify the shadow side of anything that I see that looks like it's not really helpful or it could be toxic. That's things like devil energy. So let's jump in here, Virgo, in your love life. What is going on for Virgo friends and love at this time? Virgo, Virgo. Okay. What do we have here for our Virgo friends? Let's see. At the bottom of the deck, the overall energy is for you, the hanged man. So you are in this state of suspension. It matches all of this energy very well. It's looking at things from a different perspective. But it's also not taking action. So in the recent past, the experience that you've had in a mutual connection is that you've been giving, but you don't necessarily think that other people give back or a person or a situation. The current energy that you have is here you are, Virgo. You are large and in charge of your reading. You look good. You smell good. You are the person everybody loves to see. When you show up on the spot, on the scene, you come in with answers. People can count on you for your abundance in terms of your wisdom, your skill, how you present yourself, your goodwill, the, the honest person that you are. You're very virginal and yet you're very skilled. Nine of Pentacles, we get one more pentacle and that's you making a decision about your legacy. But right now, you're still in this energy of giving to something and waiting for return. The situation right now, Virgo, that you're in in your love life is a King of Swords. The King of Swords energy is the energy that says that you're looking at this in a very, very um, factually driven light. You're seeking enlightenment by being very detached, Aquarius energy, trying to be enlightened. You might be going on the internet to look up articles and that sort of thing. But what we see here is that you are in very high problem solving mode, trying to keep your emotions out of it to find the answers that you actually need about love. 
how you are viewed by your significant other, the person you came to ask about in this reading, Seven of Cups. They don't really know what's going on with you. The Seven of Cups says that they're very confused. The Seven of Cups is Scorpio energy. They don't know whether you're in or out. I think that you're not necessarily sure whether you're in or, in or out. I think that you're just sort of drifting and going along for right now until you get a really clear answer. So in their heart space, what does your person feel for you? They feel as though you are their happiness. You are their joy. Life without you is not the party that it is when you're there. They miss you when you're gone. They don't know if you're keeping your options open. What does your person, how does your person view the relationship going forward? A new beginning. Oh, interesting. So the Fool card is here. Your person wants to take the leap of faith. Your person wants to have the fun again. Your person wants to return to a new beginning in a time when things seemed more reliable with you, Virgo. In a time that seemed like they think that you are very confusing. What is the hidden energy between the two of you? Three of coins, a desire to work together, to collaborate, to find solutions, to find answers, you know, to be really good with each other. I'm going to move the table a little bit. There we go. So what we're seeing here for you is that you're both trying to get to be very practical. This is Capricorn energy, just trying to do the work day to day. What is Spirit's advice about this relationship and the higher good? Well, there we have. We have Capricorn energy. Spirit is recommending that both of you, or you specifically, Virgo, um, hang in there. You know, be dedicated to the people that you love. Be dedicated to the nurturing that you give. Continue doing the work and nurturing. It's very important for your own happiness to be able to have that energy. Your outcome at this time and love is a chariot card. Somebody wants to come in. They want to come towards you very quickly. Um, the chariot card is like the honey, I'm home card. You know, what we're seeing here is this energy that you're, you're almost despondent, though. When I look at and just get the vibe, I get that you're going along to get along. I'm going that you really don't know what the heck is going on. You don't really want to destabilize anything. So you're just hanging in there, sort of waiting to see what happens, which is, you know, when you don't know what to do, it's oftentimes very wise to do nothing until you get the lay of the land better. So let's go ahead and clarify the cards in terms of what we see here. I'm gonna go ahead and clarify with Heart of the Fairy Oracle. I really like the energy because it's a deeper sort of psychological look at the energy people bring in. So we're going to look at this. And the whole point of this reading is to help you find your happy place within love, within interacting with another person. You know, how can you have your highest and best happiness even when things are not going really right, right? So... Life is seldom perfect. I don't experience it as perfect. Every day has a little blessing. Every day has a little challenge. So what we're seeing here for you, Virgo, is that you're just hanging out, but you feel like you're in an area of darkness. Once again, the message is that you're looking around here and you're kind of amused by what people are doing, but at the end of the day, you're the heavy hitter. You know, look at, you're the one with the wings. You're the nine of pentacles. You're the one with the power. The other people around you are sort of just accessories, if you will. They're like the, the background actors. But you definitely are center stage in your, in your life. And you're trying to find your wings. You're trying to find your way out of the darkness. You're trying to have a sense of humor about it. The six of coins, what is it that you're giving that you feel uh, needs to be equal give and take? The lady of faith. Okay, so we don't really read reversals here. You feel as though you have been very faithful to a person that you love very much. You feel as though you have been faithful emotionally, economically. You feel as though you have always tried to think the best of them. You've always tried to hold them in high regard. And so now you're wondering if they do the same with you. We have the Nine of Pentacles, which is the Star Fairy. Okay, so what we see here is that you are, are very much held in high regard. 
that the star fairy people see you as a rock star, you know, a rock star in love, a rock star in life. They see you as that person. When they see you walk into a party, you have people who all want to talk to you. So when we look at love, your person really feels as though you bring a lot to the table. We see this person feeling as though you may be, you know, a cut above. You are a cut above because you're the Nine of Pentacles with the Star Fairy. So the way your person views the situation as well as you, okay, so they see you as a fixer. Your person is a fixer, you're a fixer, you're coming in with this energy of whitewashing. You don't really get to the bottom of things. You don't get the, to the clarity of what's sort of haunting you. It looks as though you avoid conversation as well as they avoid conversation. You don't want conflict. You want to get along, but this is going along to get along. So let's see, the Seven of Cups, your person doesn't really know where you're coming from, what you're thinking, what you're doing. They're a little bit lost in translation or lost in space. The Lady of Song, okay. So you're a person who knows exactly what you want to listen to. Like when it comes to music and so forth, you know where you're going, you know where you're at. And at the end of the day, you're very independent. You know, what I see, Virgo, is even though you're very oriented to being uh, reliable, you also want some freedom. Your person feels that you are a temptation. They feel as though you're keeping your options open. They feel as though you may be partaking of other relationships. You may not be telling them. But the Lady of Song is really just, you know, that energy of really knowing how to be happy on your own. So what I see here is a little bit of a codependent relationship. You're really good. Virgo, you're like really good. Like day to day, day in, day out, you're really good. You're solid where you're at. But you have people around you who are not. Your person wants a new beginning, but they don't know if you want a new beginning. Of two minds is telling me that your person doesn't really know where they're going to, you know, what's going to happen here, what's, what's, what is happening with you. So we get Pan. You also have somebody here, Virgo, who the Fairy of Naughtiness and Pan are very charming little cards, as long as it isn't in the middle of an adult relationship. What it says to me, Virgo, is that you're dealing with somebody who may not want to grow up. It's like, you know, it's like that little song in Peter Pan. I won't grow up. I don't want to go to school. I just want to do what I want to do and I want to be happy. And so this person is not understanding who you really are. They're not understanding what's happening because, you know, you're usually right there. You're usually giving to the relationship. And right now you're not paying this person very much attention. That's what I'm getting. So what I get here, so for the Three of Coins, tell us about this Three of Coins energy, the juggler. Okay, so between the two of you, you are juggling the idea. You're juggling the idea of whether you want to be with each other or not. And Virgo, it looks like for some of you, there's children involved. But it also looks like there's a part of both of you that want to have something new and fresh. Tell us more about this child card we get the paradox. So there is a paradox here. It's it's like the two of you really love each other, but you're kind of at a loss of what to do with the relationship. Obligations seem to be driving the relationship more than love, more than fun, more than fulfillment. Tell us what the Queen of Pentacles is about, the Queen of the Owls. The Queen of Wisdom, you know, Spirit is calling on you to use your wisdom. Tell us what the outcome card is. Clarify that, honey, I'm home card. Because this person wants to come home to you, but it's almost like they're not, you're not getting sustenance. It's not necessarily a bad relationship, but the question is, you don't really know what drives this person that you're in relationship with. There's sort of a lack of understanding here. You have a lot of questions about what it is that they really expect from you. And so that's interesting. So let's look and see the energy here because it just looks like you're in this relationship and you're sort of just letting it flow day to day, but you're not necessarily really feeling like it resonates with you. So let's see what the energy is for you, uh, Virgo. Let's see. I'm going to do three cards for you and three cards for your person about sort of thoughts, feelings, intentions. So for you, your thoughts... 
Ten of Wands. This relationship is burdensome to you in some way. We get the Five of Swords. You feel as though this person is really unfair to you. This person is, this has to change is what I'm seeing. And we get the Page of Pentacles. But you're like, you're so busy working that you kind of have a tendency to sweep this under the carpet is what I'm getting, Virgo. And we see that with the other cards. We see that you're going along to get along because you kind of don't know quite what to do. And, you know, if you're in a marriage, that's, you know, do we want to rush to a divorce? Of course not. But the Ten of Wands says that for your happiness, you need to sort of give up on trying to make this other person happy. Five of Swords says you're never going to achieve that, that they're going to always sort of hold you accountable in this relationship uh, for their happiness, which is, as you, you and I both know, happiness is an inside job. So let's see what we have now for their energy, Ace of Pentacles. So they want you to make a new offer to them. They want to make a new offer to you. But the Seven of Cups, look at this. They don't even know what they're offering. They don't even know what they have to offer you. If they were really, if you really scrutinize them, they're projecting, you know, all of these sort of fantasies onto you because we see it here. We see it under this card, you know, we see the way they view you as sort of their fantasy and they don't even know what to do with you. It's like the old joke. There was a dog chasing a Volkswagen and at the end of the day, they caught the Volkswagen and didn't know what to do with it. So your person kind of is in under their head, you know, over their head, but we get the fool card. So this person is very naive. They're, you know, there's a part of them that you know it's very peter pan like so let's see what your best course of action is here let's see what your best course of action at this time for your fulfillment for your happiness for your joy ace of swords just be really clear on your own speak your truth don't leave anything to their imagination if they ask a question give a direct answer the Two of Wands, keep your options open. You know, you don't have to really decide on anything about what you're going to do. But look at your future. The heart is here burning between these two wands. It really speaks to the fact that, you know, you want to be happy in love. And at this time, the Eight of Pentacles. Just working on yourself, really making yourself stronger, going towards your goals, being very focused on your skill set, you know, doing the work every day that you need to do. And sort of right now, letting spirit kind of take control. Let's see what the ancestors' messages are for you. Let's see what we have here from your ancestors. Let's see. Drum, dream, and journey. So spirit is asking you to really spend time sort of fast, uh, sort of um, fantasizing about what it is that you want. Grow within your current situation. So to so the, the message that's really coming through here for me, Virgo, is that you need to really talk to your partner and share with them a goal that you hope they have mutually of growing, of doing, of creating in your lives and not being in this energy of, of really like needing to be one another's happiness. Because, Virgo, you're very independent, and I see you able to really maneuver around life quite well. But this person seems to be very focused, like, you're my happiness. You have to make me happy. Well, that's not true. It's very childish. It's like, Mommy, I'm bored today. Tell me what I can do to be happy. You make me happy, Mommy. And it's, it's not. We did see the Queen of Pentacles as the energy of you being nurturing. That was the advice from spirit. But it's also the advice that everybody has to, you know, and the, when everybody's an adult in the room, they need to contribute to their own happiness. And they have the primary responsibility for that. So what we're seeing right now is really focus on your larger dreams. Get in touch with what you want. Um, you know, don't do anything abrupt. It's saying stay in your current situation, seek the wisdom, take this time out for yourself, and intend and create the larger part of yourself. This is be independent, take time to work your creative projects, and enjoy your life. So I'm going to leave it there, Virgo. So you do have a bit of a conundrum, um, but you know, Hey, the beat goes on, life goes on. You obviously are very attached to this person. 
and um, you're going to find a path forward by taking good care of yourself and really getting focused on what you want.